Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back. Got the shrimp outrigger. Possibly the world's fastest <laughs> shrimp outrigger. Oh, 77. And I want to try to save this boat. We, uh, we hit 77 miles an hour with it the other day. I think the boat has more in it. So um, I'm going to repair the damage in this video. It's going to be somewhat of a highlighted repair. Going to walk you guys through my steps, what I'm doing, my thought process. Stick around. Big B. We're going to collect RC. So what I'm going to do, well, what we got to do is make sure our boom tubes are perfectly level to one another a lot of guys make jigs to set their boat on i'm not that guy i just uh set it on glass and i use blocks and measure and make sure everything's on the money okay clean up the area okay pull this piece of wood out before i pull this piece of wood out i want to actually epoxy this on the boat Okay, this is going to help keep everything lined up for me so it's not like crooked. And I basically, I'm basically going to epoxy this one piece up top just to tack it in place. So it gives me something to work off of. Then we're going to take the Dremel and all these fun little bits and grind out some of this wood right here. Feather it, feather, feather a little, little valley there so we could fill it with fiberglass and carbon fiber epoxy. Uh, I'll show you here later on and then we're gonna once I get this in this right here filled We'll pull this piece of wood off Okay, pull this piece of wood off clean it up so we can put a new piece of wood in later on and Then work on this bottom piece now this bottom piece. I'm actually I got to epoxy that down I Also, I'm gonna go a little bit different route gonna make me like a little recovery Okay, so I, I was thinking about scarfing two pieces on and keeping the original design. But I think the easiest way to do it is just feather this out and then lay a piece of wood on top. Have a little break right here for like a recovery step. And uh, that's the plan. That's the plan. All right, so let's do it. All right, so I got some cabbage seal and epoxy mixed up here. 15 minute. Okay. And I'm not trying to be pretty and nice. I'm going to kind of glob it on here but I'm just going to try to glue this back into place okay I'm going to put a clamp on it okay so I got it glued up just this one piece just basically from the, my fingernail to the crack okay that's all I glued in that's it Okay, all right, so um, so I've been doing some prep work here. I, I repair like this, it's all about the preparation. So you get a nice solid uh, repair, you know? So I got some uh, 80 grit and I basically sanded this like level all the way across. I cut it flat so we'll have something to glue to, okay? Uh, I also cleaned up in here so when we go to put this back in there it'll it'll fit nicely same thing what whatever was left of this once i do this repair i'll manicure the repaired area so we'll have a nice place to set our front piece okay uh, this right here i took my time on I, I feathered this out like a nice transition from from like something to basically nothing where the break is okay uh, the longer you the longer or wider you make this re this patch area the more feathered it is the better the repair will be the stronger it will be the repair the repair will basically come out to here so so with this area right here I'll basically uh, put me a small piece of fiberglass cloth epoxy it in then I lay a little bit wider piece on, a little bit wider piece, a little bit wider piece, until I cover this whole sanded area. This whole piece will basically be top coated with either fiberglass or carbon fiber. I think probably a little bit of both. I think I'm going to sandwich fiberglass 
and carbon fiber sandwich it so it's like very rigid and strong Hopefully you guys could see what I was doing. I had the camera kind of close up so you guys could see. Uh, basically, small, medium, large, extra large piece. Then I put a piece of carbon fiber uh, next to my last layer. And then I put another piece of lo larger fiberglass on. And I didn't, I didn't roll it over or anything. Okay, I just repaired and joined this this forward piece to the rest of the stringer to basically try to make it one I was really careful not to get epoxy under where I have to glue this in okay once we once we glue this in that's really going to strengthen everything up give it some reinforcement and then when we put this piece on it'll tie everything together so uh, that's what I did I, I, I went a little bit higher than the rest of the stringer so I can sand it and flatten everything out and I won't have to do any filling you know so that should do it that should do it okay okay so it's been about four, four or five hours since I did this um, I could probably go ahead and grind all this down and shape it up but I'm i I'm gonna wait overnight before I put the grinder on it you know sander but we'll get all that taken down and flattened up we'll probably end up priming the front just because uh, so it don't look just quite so bad and out of place I'm gonna go ahead and glue this up it's pretty easy I'm just gonna clamp it you know get a bunch of thickened epoxy in there and clamp it down pretty simple a little freaking afterthought I wish I would have flipped the hull over when I clamped it gravity would have kept the epoxy in the corners here <laughs> I also wish I would have grinded a little area right here off so I could put that clamp like right on the stringer so I'm not putting any pressure on the the center of the the tub you know but uh it, it is what it is okay okay so I've been out in the shop basically got this thing all sanded and prepped trimmed up uh, not quite done with it yet but I feel I'm, I'm, I'm close enough with the with the sanding I can go ahead and start the next part so I actually have some birch no basswood basswood gluing up wait for it to cure out we're gonna use that up front um, they had balsa on here but uh, this boat can actually use the extra weight up forward, especially like pushing it in saw passes. I think it'll uh, benefit from a little extra weight up here because um, I, I was actually running about about an ounce of extra weight up forward in that saw pass because uh, in the park pond it would want to pick up. So I, I actually added a little extra weight. So uh, we need to cut this out. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, okay, so I decided to use that hand laid piece of carbon fiber. It's like 0.75 thick, you know, 0.7 millimeter thick hand laid piece of carbon fiber that I've actually cut out and uh, I just got a dry fit right now. Um, I got the forward part where I cut that nose piece off. I've got it all cleaned up. Let's see if I can get it where it's supposed to be yeah see right here I got that little notch right there straightened all up got it like perfect ready to be glued up kind of like up in the air if I want to glue this on first or glue this nose piece on first but I think I think I'm gonna go with gluing this in first that way I can get it in there from the ends from this forward section and kind of like reinforce it 
with epoxy because sometimes epoxy it really don't like to stick to this carbon fiber so I wanted to spend a little bit of time on it and be able to get to it from the inside and then I'll just uh, cut that nose piece out and squeeze it in here actually turns out pretty good I like it I like it it got me a little break back here nothing nothing real huge but I got one just because uh, I got my cap nice and tight like a tight fitting cap here with a little glue up like flange all the way around it okay so basically all I gotta do is put some epoxy on it and tap it into place give it a little tap 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 a right. and uh, she'll be in, in good to go basically so I got the front glued on pretty simple DUN done all right I want to go ahead and show you guys the the sponsons and the boom tubes I had to I had to cut the old boom tube out and replace it okay but um I really didn't have to it was close enough I probably could have run the boat you know but I got it on the money well I say on the money it's close enough there we go <laughs> all right um up here up here uh you got to make sure these boom tubes are level with the ride surface if if not level like really close to it okay 10 5 10 5 5 10 okay it kind of fluctuates but uh when you put it on there there's a little flex in there so it kind of throws everything off but i got it i got them level okay i actually raised this no 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 i lowered it i lowered it just a smidge like just a smidge and i basically doing that it actually kind of lowers my my aoa okay so i got all that worked out all right the repair turned out great as you guys seen we got the the stringer basically worked out repaired it's solid that's a solid repair right there got the the carbon fiber glued up looks pretty good my my quote unquote recovery it the boat don't need one this boat takes off great with the the, the way that this sponson's bottoms designed the boat pops up out the water it really didn't need it uh adding that carbon fiber it actually just kind of gives it some character and um it was actually easier to repair the boat like this rather than trying to um scarf in a piece of wood to match up the original design this was just an, uh, a, a shortcut if you will you know it looks good and i almost don't even want to paint it I, I gotta touch that up with some primer that one with some primer and i, I really don't even want to paint it man uh because it's probably going to happen again and like i said uh when you paint a boat you got to sand through the paint the primer down to the wood to repair it and It'll just be easier for future repairs if I don't paint it. I got this right here sealed. Okay, I sealed this piece three times, like three coats. Uh, my last coat, I, I, I sanded the boat lightly, the whole boat. My last coat of sealer, which is epoxy thinned out, I brushed it on the whole boat. And then I took a cloth with thinned epoxy and, and rubbed the epoxy into the whole, the whole tub. The whole tub is now sealed again okay uh, I did add a little extra weight I, I wish I would have weighed the boat before but we were missing a bunch of pieces but um, I don't even know what it weighs now but it's it's got a little bit more weight up forward which is good for my saw passes I run that little 2200 milliamp forest pack on my saw pass and I normally have to add like a like a ounce of weight basically a socket last run I put a bank sinker up here a one ounce bank sinker so that little bit of extra weight from the epoxy and carbon fiber fi fiberglass will actually help 
add a little extra weight. I want it with the hard wood up here instead of the, the balsa wood for the extra weight up forward to help hold the boat down. Okay, so uh, it's done. I'm not going to keep you guys any longer. I didn't mean to make the video this long. It was kind of like supposed to be a highlighted build turned into like a, a full freaking fledged uh, repair video. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm going to get it all taped up, get my, my sponsons set for my next run, get my motor back in. I couldn't get my ESC out. i actually going to have to take it out because I need to change out my connectors. These things have seen better days. Look at that. See all that tarnish? corrosion on the inside i got everything in the boat um, i switched those four millimeter bullets to 5.5 okay a little more current flow less resistance in the wire bigger connector less heat okay i also switched out um, my xt60 um, the xt60 i had on here i don't even know where it's at it had a, a prong missing on the male male part that slides into the battery so i went ahead and changed it out okay so that's good to go i plugged everything in and my servo is not working that little 35 40 dollar power hd digital servo i've never had any issue well i take it back because i stripped the gear out on this one my fault i was moving my rudder and i switched the gear out like just stripped it out so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to put this gear set in this servo. The motor's good in this one, motor's bad in that one. So I like to actually buy matching servos and try to stick with that servo, like the DS servo, I, 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 I stick with it. Um, I have a couple of them in my parts bin, like if I, I burn a motor up in one or I mess a gear set up, I'll have a, a backup. I could just drop a gear set in. Uh, and vice versa, you know, so I try to stick with the same servo. I don't know if I'm going to stick with these. Ooh, got it working, boy. Now, this one's all junk, but it's actually kind of weird. You see that plastic gear right there? One had a plastic gear and one had a metal gear. Same exact servo. Isn't that weird? See that plastic gear right there? So I just changed the gear set over, made sure that that little stop back there was in the right place boom 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 ready to roll boy ready to roll <laughs> i'll see you guys on the water uh we'll probably run this guy here the oxy digger our next outing the shrimp outrigger possibly take the dominator out all right um i just put a 2000 kv 4074 in this one okay and I wanted to compare that motor to the 10 shock motor. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Big B, Ryan Clay RC.